If you were to look at the last few years of popular game releases, you'd be forgiven for not knowing what decade you were in. Hot new game releases like Final Fantasy VII, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, and Resident Evil 4. Highly anticipated titles like Silent Hill 2, Metal Gear Solid 3, and Final Fantasy VII. Point five, Rebirth, HD Remix, 369 Days, Overact, Soul for Y, if Timmy has four apples! Video game remakes are a safe bet for companies to get some easy nostalgia money. And for the most part, they're usually pretty good. They aren't always a smash hit and some fall shorter than others, you know, we can't all be Lisa. But for the most part, game remakes give us a chance to play the game that the devs wanted to make but couldn't due to technical limits, or they give us an alternate version not meant to replace, but to add to its legacy. It's easy to get cynical over how there are no new ideas and everything's just being remade and rebooted nowadays, but you gotta admit there is at least some novelty in seeing these old classics get reborn. It's fun. And the more these classic titles get remade and sell well, the more other companies are gonna follow the trend. Which leads us to today where we are absolutely drowning in PS2 games. And it isn't just stopping at 6th gen titles either, which I think is very interesting. Because personally, I feel like PS3 and 360 era titles are where the cutoff should be. The graphics were pretty good, and this is where a decent amount of modern gaming trends and mechanics originated from, so revisiting them doesn't feel too jarring. You look at Max Payne 1 and 2, where Max does his vintage, shit-eating grin move, and you can understand those getting remade. If they were to be like, f*** it, I got one more in me and remake Max Payne 3, okay. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna play it, but like, it just doesn't make as much sense for a game that looks this good. Despite that, we've already seen remakes of games like Dead Space and The Last of Us, and yes, The Last of Us Part 1 is a from the ground up remake. This is not a port. The original was practically a PS4 game and they remade it within a decade. And if any company is going to follow this trend and remake a 6th gen title that's already widely available, it is Capcom. The Resident Evil franchise has been ported to everything the light touches at this point. The games have a long standing and still growing fan base, and these games are known for their replayability, so this makes a lot of sense. They know that people will keep buying ports if they release them every generation, and this is not a judgment thing, I'm guilty of it too. I've bought just about every version of RE4 and a few copies of some other titles. I am aware I have a problem. But recently, it hasn't been ports, but full-blown remakes of old games that have been Capcom's main focus. Starting with the famous We Do It announcement back in 2015 that answered the biggest fan request of the time, remaking Resident Evil 2. They remade RE1 back in 2002 when it was so goddamn good that many people would argue that it replaces the original. It's me, I'm many people, it replaces the original. With 2 and 3 still stuck in Polygon Town, most people thought that they would be getting the same treatment at some point. And after a long wait, Resident Evil 2 Remake was released in 2019, and this is where shit gets complicated. RE2 Remake is a very good game. It's a great retelling of the original story that's best enjoyed if you go into it expecting that. Up to that point, RE1 Remake was the only point of reference that we had for what these remakes were going to be like. Hell, they even remastered RE1 Remake the same year as the big announcement, so it was still fresh on people's minds. So when RE2 turned out to be more of a reimagining that didn't really follow every single beat, there were some grief. Mostly the lack of a true A-B scenario for both characters and no zapping system, which was a cool mechanic where certain items picked up by one character would be unavailable for the other to pick up in their scenario, making the world feel more immersive and adding yet another layer of risk management. It was a sore spot for sure, but most people took it for what it was and enjoyed it. It's a really good game. But when remaking a classic, those comparisons are impossible to avoid, and unfortunately it only got worse the following year. RE3 Remake was released a little over a year later and my god this game makes my ass itch. This game has a lot of problems. Mostly it's insanely short runtime and really goofy difficulty modes where they clearly just crank up the enemy's speed and health almost to the point where it feels untested. Oh and this issue crept its way into RE4 Remake too. Like it's not as bad, but it's still pretty bad. But but that's a topic for another day. Stay on task, Iroh. This is what we take the Adderall for. The most important thing that you need to take from this game is that while it didn't start development at the same time as RE2, it did start shortly after, which caused quite a bit of overlap. And RE4 started development sometime in 2018, likely around the time that RE2 was wrapping up. So at some point, all of these games were in some stage of development at the same time. And this is where I'm going to pause the video to let you guys know that I'm about to engage in a bit of speculation. I've been doing a lot of research for this video and I learned a lot that I did not know about the development of these games. Apparently this approach of developing multiple titles simultaneously across separate studios is just something they do over at Capcom. They are not new to this, they are true to this. And that makes sense with how quickly these games have been coming out. I also learned that RE3, the weakest link, wasn't developed by Capcom's 
A-Team. Most of 3 was handled by external studios Redworks and M2. M2 was also handling RE4 up until 2021 when their role was heavily reduced and swapped over to Capcom's main in-house dev team. Funnily enough, this was because M2 wanted RE4 to be more of a one-to-one -one remake after all the backlash that RE3 got, and Capcom was not a fan of this approach. This led to a massive overhaul of the game's direction and ended up delaying it into 2023. Now, this, all of this confusion between teams and goofy little decisions like M2 deciding not to make Nemesis stalk you as much in RE3 because they saw what the other team was doing with Mr. X and they didn't want them to feel too similar, so instead of just making a faster, stronger Nemesis, they decided to just put him on rails, defeating the entire f***ing purpose of Nemesis. All of this has me worried about the near future of the franchise, and if we'll see another example of one remake being the black sheep while the others shine. Which finally brings us to the giant boulder punching elephant in the room. Code Veronica. <laughs> yeah guys, uh, Resident Evil Code Veronica? It's not good. Nah, but for real, of all games that need a remake, even though I'm not a fan of that way of thinking, it's Code Veronica. This game has not aged well, and that's double bad because it was pretty dated when it came out. And I know this game has a very dedicated cult following that might take issue with me going so hard on it, but we need to keep it a billion for a sec, okay? This game has huge issues that make it really tough to revisit, mainly the sudden difficulty spikes that make it too easy for you to accidentally soft lock yourself. I got three words for you. Cargo plain tyrant. F*** off. These flaws are even more unfortunate considering the huge role the story plays in the franchise's overall narrative. Code Veronica is where Wesker is established as the main villain of the series, the guy pulling the strings from the shadows. It's where we learn he's still alive, and the reason he's still alive is because he's Jesus now. Motherfucker pulls up with super strength, super speed, he's basically unkillable and he despises Chris. As goofy as this game's story is, it's the bridge into the next arc of the overall story. It's the first main entry post Raccoon City, where we get to see what all these characters are up to. A Code Veronica remake would be a great opportunity to address the original's flaws and give a fresh take on the story, but, you know, realistically, they already remade 1 through 4, and they don't need to remake 5, so even though 4 is post-Raccoon City, it's not that big of a deal because if they're gonna stop at 4, and I'm pretty sure they are, they'd have no need to put such a big emphasis on what the f*** is that behind me? Yeah, so uh, the ending of RE4, and especially Separate Ways, heavily foreshadows an RE5 remake, and this has me very concerned. Hey, so while I was editing this video, Capcom just straight up confirmed that they were gonna be making more remakes in the future, but they didn't specify exactly what they would be or what order they would do them in. So just wanted to clarify that. My language coming up is still going to sound speculative, but that's because this was before they had actually confirmed anything. Okay, see you later. For one, you can refer to the Max Payne question. But that aside, if Capcom's goal is to make the story of these remakes more fleshed out and cohesive, isn't it a bit weird to just kind of throw Wesker into the mix without any real buildup? Code Veronica establishes that Wesker is still alive and the one really running the Show. RE4 mentions him briefly in the main plot and then expands on it in separate ways, which leads into the final arc with him and Chris in RE5. Jumping into 5 can work, but it really does the narrative a disservice. But sure, Wesker is a cartoonishly evil villain anyway, so it can work to have him just immediately fill that role. But doing so really expedites the ongoing feud that he has with Chris and also, like, like, just f Claire, right? And if you're wondering if I think they should remake it, I honestly cannot answer that question, because a couple years ago, I was very vocal about how RE4 was perfect and didn't need to be remade, and how Capcom really only stood to lose more than they could gain by remaking such a beloved title, and I was dead the f wrong. That RE5 gameplay in this engine with new mechanics? Cha, please. My fear is that we'll get a remake of 5 and either nothing at all for CV, or we'll get another RE3 situation, where 5 is very well done and fleshed out, and CV is shallow and feels like an afterthought. An RE4 remake being so successful and so broadly appealing might just be the final nail in the coffin. The more action-oriented approach makes the game appeal to not just die-hard fans, but also casual players who just want a good third-person action game to play. With the slow survival horror gameplay of 1 through 3 firmly behind us, 
face, I don't see a return to that style doing nearly as well, especially after the toughest act to follow. It disgusts me to think that we might miss out on a great Co Veronica remake, one made with all the love that RE4 got just because it might not sell as well. But unfortunately, Capcom might feel that way. With all the momentum of 4 and all the gesturing at 5, it feels like Code Veronica could end up slipping through the cracks yet again. And it also makes me wonder just how far Capcom is willing to take this. Because if 5 is on the table, then why wouldn't 6 be? I know they would much rather pretend that it never happened, but f it, these things print money, right? There are even rumors that they plan on remaking RE1 again. And like, dude, I get it. I know it looks super cool. I buy it day one. I am the problem. But like, f man a remake of a remake is this really necessary and hey if we're going to be remaking all of these games why not do some of them that need it online co-op outbreak in this engine would go stupid they keep trying to make all these whack-ass multiplayer games anyway so why not make one that'll actually be worth a goddamn it just sucks because it really feels like if we ever do get a code veronica remake it'll fall into the same vortex of good one bad one great one that we've gotten so far and it sucks to think that one might have to suffer for another one to shine like how much good art are we missing out on because of this type of mindset i mean i really don't understand why things have to be the, the reason is money goodbye everyone Hey, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching the video and for all the love and support that the last video got. Uh, this one should have been out way long ago. I am so sorry. I really didn't mean to take like two and a half months in between the last video. I talked about in a community post how like a lot of crazy, just like a lot of heavy shit was going on uh, with my family and in my personal life. There was a lot of stuff that I really needed to be present for and um, I don't regret being present for it at all. I promise the next videos aren't going to take as long. Hopefully, I shouldn't say promise. Allow me to walk that back. <laughs> I do not intend for the next couple videos to take as long as this one. Um, I'm pretty sure it won't. Uh, this is the second time that I filmed this type of post video. Hey, thanks for the or whatever at like 1 a.m. when I had work at like 8 the next day. Um, so I'm going to get the fuck up out of here. Uh, see you in the next video. I appreciate you all. Uh, thanks and goodbye. See you later.